Hello and welcome to the Great British Midweek Daily Rundown with me, Dan Morfitz. This is the show on Channel 7 where we look at some of the day's big talking points and some little bits you might have missed too. We might even eat cake, because that's a TV winner. Right, things up for debate on this Daily Rundown include Traingate, Hillsborough and Twitter abuse. The more things change, the more things stay the same. But first, it's time to introduce my wonderful guest who will help us make sense of it all. Proud bronze medal winner of the Great Village Bake Off with his fish cakes <laughs> and writer, Drew Tosh. This is, it's just got a boat now, has it? Is my, is my bronze, I mean, I did better than Tom Daly. Um, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> harsh, but completely yeah. fair. The fish yeah. cakes looks yeah. delicious. How did you make the fish? Well, it was inspired by my uh, my own fish, Mabel, uh, and I, I ordered a cutter online to make sort of fish on the top, and I thought it would be actual size, and it was huge. So they turned more into sort of like Moby Dick cakes. <laughs> but um, I just followed Dealey. You can't go wrong, and you yeah. can't do wrong with a Moby Dick cake. Yeah. yeah. Well. And uh, also joining us is Master Phalance Naysayer, musician and also eater of baked goods, Lars K. Yeah, well good to be here all on the bonquette of news once again and I'm just glad you didn't make us sit on the floor, you know, like a certain yes. someone. You know. Yes, but we mm. would also have video evidence of that yeah. as well. So. Now if you want to get involved with the show and have your say on anything we chat about, just tweet us at The Daily Rundown. That's Squiggle. The Daily Rundown. Go on, you will not regret it. Follow us while you're there, otherwise you'll have wasted your own time. Time to look at our first story now. Detectives leading a criminal investigation into the Hillsborough disaster have released CCTV images of 19 men that they want to speak to. 96 fans were killed as a result of the crush at the football ground in Sheffield in April 1989. Images of potential witnesses at the stadium's Leppings Lane end have been released as part of Operation Resolve and the senior investigating officer stressed that the men pictured had done nothing wrong. So do we think it's good that the police have made good on their promise to bring criminal charges? Well, it's, it's awful the how Hillsborough st still continues to haunt us. I mean, it's still, I think it's even after all this time, it's truly shocking I mean, to think back. Um, also, people dying under such appalling circumstances. But. Um, uh, yes, I think it's important that as the, the the promises of a criminal investigation made good, but I really understand why the families have been a bit sceptical today. Mm. Um, because uh, it's not just ancient history that the, the police were so obstructive and so frankly abusive about the fans. This has carried up right, right into recent history. Is that also in the, even in the most recent inquest, which just finished this year, the, the South Yorkshire police were still actually pushing against and being antagonistic. Um, they were still spending yes. hundreds of thousands of legal uh, papers on the fact of to protect the police. Yeah, absolutely. And also what transpired afterwards was also that their their media, uh, their media uh, advisor had been actually pressured into still actually um, emphasizing that anything that could also uh, bring the fans into disrepute again, and also kind of to minimize the damage of the police. So, uh, and I, even after there was a supposed apology in 2012. So I understand why there's, there's genuine skepticism um, because the actions of the police added so much hurt and insult into the pool, uh, into those uh, uh, to, after those appalling events. The coroner's court inquest, of course, exonerated all Liverpool fans of any blame, and clearly pointed the finger at South Yorkshire Police and the individuals concerned. Does Operation Resolve hope to heal those wounds or reopen them, Drew? It will never heal them. I mean, what it's done, it's done. I mean, was it 27 years ago now? Mm. I think, I think to me, I can understand why the families are sceptical because it feels like they're just going to pick over the same old stuff over and over again. I mean, all that time ago, they've now found some new footage of witnesses. Where was that before? And mm. I mean, I can't remember what I was doing last week. 29 years ago now, I think they just, I get the feeling they just hope it'll get buried into more litigation, more paperwork more time will pass on and more time will pass on and they'll never really get to the bottom of anything because people's memories, you know, a lot of people probably have blocked it out that were there. Uh, some have already passed away. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what can actually be gained. Now, I think I get the impression the families just wanted the justice of being given an apology. Mm. I don't think realistically they're going to expect that much more is going to come from it. And I think 
in a way, sometimes these stories like that come out today is just the, you know, the police trying to make it, they're still trying to do something. But I'd imagine it's an investigation that's going to go as slow as ever. The police have come out and said that the individuals that they pinpointed on the pictures that they've had upgraded and uh, they've got a better uh, image of all the individuals that they want to talk as witnesses uh, in the investigation rather than part of any blame. But could you understand if some of the families and friends of the people that were there that day don't trust the police at all. Well, well, ab absolutely, and it was still framed in the way um, it was presented to the media. Oh, well, that they've done nothing wrong. Yes, we know that. We heard that absolutely um, earlier that earlier this year after the inquest, and that was, and that was really what what the families were after all all of this time because it was also the appallingness. I mean, just the a really truly disgusting nature of the allegations. Um, also, we're going to remember from the Sun, and and also the good people of Mergey side. I think still remember that very keenly, um, as as really as well. Well, they they should, um, but it's. And that's, but essentially, I think Drew's right. Is that I think the the line should really should really have been drawn under um, the the result of the also the findings of the jury at the inquest, which was which was very clear um, that also that the the police and also to a certain extent the ambulance services were to blame, um, but also there were a host of um, a host of reasons in terms of the way that it was set up. But it wasn't about the fans um, and. And in a certain, in certain sense, that's where where we have to leave it now, because that was the truth of that day, and because that's what that's what was what's been found. Aren't the police damned if they do though, and damned if they don't with Operation Resolve? If they didn't try and bring charges against some of the individuals in police ranks, then again, Hillsborough families and friends would be able to say there's a slight cover up going on, or there's there's not justice because there is still a fight for justice. It's never going to go away. But also, um, Yorkshire Police are also in a bit of a back foot now anyway, with the whole Cliff Richard thing. I think he's suing them now for the whole wrongful uh, breaking into his house and searching for evidence without him even being aware of it. So they're not exactly on a roll in general for the way that they, they go about their business. So, um, but I mean, there's, there's something today or yesterday it was shown that they've made some uh, 3D diagrams and models of the gated area at Hillsborough and the main gate that was open that led to everything sort of unravelling after that and I think what you're saying is mm -hmm. true about there's still this sort of like indication of the police saying well it wasn't us um, mm. so therefore it must have been you because they're saying well that gate was open we didn't do it so someone must have done it and that was pretty much the, the, the line that they were taking. So therefore, do you think they're looking mm -hmm. for fault then? I, d I think I think that could be the danger. Yeah, they, they're always going to try and find something that might actually take the blame off them completely. Well, I think it was certainly that was certainly some of the concerns that were raised, raised today, specifically about the kind of the questions to do with, with, the, with the the gate and the the, the the sense that also particularly the line of inquiry seemed to be leading back, leading backwards and not going forwards to a kind of resolution. This does show a systemic though lack of trust within the police. Uh, with, within the population of the police if people can't even come forward to help in a police investigation because of fear that they're going to get framed, really. Well, uh, well, but South Yorkshire Police only have themselves to blame for that um, in, in terms of the way that they've they handled it. Um, but also, I mean, you're right. It's not. It's not just. Uh, it, I said just. Uh, it's not even just uh, what happened with Hillsborough has been also shown where the South Yorkshire Police have been uh, failing. Obviously, there's kind. Of, there's also many other cases in terms of all child, grief, yes, yes, and, the absolutely, and, and also cases of child ex, uh, um, child sexual exploitation as well being ignored um, why why that force is still constituting the way it is I don't know actually and I I think there is there is actually something that needs to be done in terms of uh, perhaps a restructuring in terms of York of a, of so a greater you, Yorkshire are you, are police are you saying there's a case for South Yorkshire police to be dissolved as it currently is, I, I would abs I, just, I would absolutely say that that, that ought to be looked looked into because it's seemed so so woefully under par um, again and again. That's certainly what I think. I, it's very difficult to see how public how the think, public trust can be restored. Do you think then that South Yorkshire Police, let's say the brand, is just seen as being affected by failure and injustice? 
Probably. I, mean, I, I think it's also, it's, 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 we're talking constantly about the police. I mean, the, the, the main people I think about are the families and the bereaved who all these years later still can't get any kind of closure. It's never going to go away. They're never going to be able to, you don't get over that, of course you don't, but you mm. hopefully find a place to put it and move on with your life and they can't do that. And I suspect they never will. Um, because it's, it just goes on and on and on and on. Why it took 29 years or however long it was to even get to this point, yeah. it's ridiculous. You know, you just think, well, there's something wrong yeah. in a system that allows that to happen. That 27 year wait for justice was Nonsense. a long and arduous one. Uh, and with the inquest being over and done with, a few thought it was the end, but a few do seek this justice. And um, maybe it would be best for those people seen the in the photos to come forward, give their witness statements to the police. I could understand why they wouldn't want to yeah. because of everything else that's happened around. The, well, yeah. you know, well, it'll be actually. interesting. To, it'll be interesting to see, but it's also about how you set that up mm. and, and to make to make it possible for people to come forward and to feel like that, that they're actually contributing to something positive, um, which I'm sure, surely that's what we all want right now. The Hillsborough disaster is mm. a story that's never really going to have mm. be closed upon, is it? Uh, no, uh, well, uh, no, and I think a lot of the fault of that is particularly to do with the sun and the media. Is that mm. um, I think it's because that that front page was so hurtful. I think, but I think it seemed to encapsulate a lot of things from that time. Actual, a real contempt mm. for people, um, people in Merseyside, people in the north, people who enjoy football. Um, that also it was not uh, wasn't it was also much broader that it was it was about something that was horrendous but also it shows why those miscarriages of justice can well, happen we, we hope of contempt. we hope that any mm. police investigation finally does mm. get to the number of it and the truth that's the end of part one of the daily rundown still to come corbyn versus the virgin and Twitter controls. Get the kettle on and the three of us will be back in just a few minutes time here on Channel 7 with the Daily Rundown. Do not go away. <laughs>